Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Robot Wars Episode Reviews. We're on to Heat Eye of Series 4, and I'm joined by two guests. One is doing his um, record of four podcasts in a row. I can't get him to leave, but whatever, it's Sam Elliott 64. Excuse me, I'm not the one with my hands tied to the desk and being handcuffed to do this. But uh, <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm back again. Uh, I think I've got a long break until my next one, but I think my next one's Heat P, so I'm really excited about it. Yeah, you've got a while off until then. I've, 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 got, a, I've got a nice holiday. And of course, joining me once again is um, Otaku Nate. Hey guys, uh, no witty Overwatch quote uh, for me this time. I was at a funeral all day yesterday. Uh, my grandmother passed away after several years of struggles with her health. Hmm. So the best way to cheer you up is to talk about Heat Eye. Robots, fight, robots fighting. Yeah. A, complete, a completely average Heat if ever there was one. You, you, don't, you don't have permission to be as obnoxious as possible, so I don't really care. <laughs> but, um, actually, yeah, as I mentioned in the last here, pre, in the preview for Heat Eye, this one is probably the most average meh heat of series 4 but i have to stress that doesn't mean it's a bad heat i, I mean oh, for, no, not, not i mean well. I, I mean like gbh's heat in series 2 wasn't bad it was just eh same with grit maybe um which i think other heats like um beast of bobbins heat in series 3 it's you not know what? bad I, i'm going to be i want to be different to you here i'm going to say i actually really enjoy this heat we can enjoy I it i re- i really i really do enjoy this i think this heat's actually pretty damn good there's a lot of variation in the designs uh obviously we'll get to those in a minute and you've got like a good you got a good fight at the heat final you know splinter and eric is quite a, quite a decent back and forth fight hmm. you know I, there's a lot going for this heat for me i, I just I, I personally quite quite enjoy i think it's quite fun to watch i mean i do agree i do like the robots in this heat um for the most part but um there's one particular one we'll get to obviously but uh as i mean it's just i think it's just more the case there's, there's nothing in the heat for me, when I think back on it, if that is one massively key moment where I go, oh, that was a brilliant moment or something, it's more just the battles are really good, but there's nothing kind of outstanding in anything particular. It was more by the numbers, I guess, in a way. But it's not a bad, again, it's not a bad heat. It's just not one I remember as much. But also a little bit of bookkeeping before we start uh, talking about the heat. I forgot to mention this last heat, as I should have really, but I do have a SoundCloud account now. And all the podcast audio will be going to there before the, the before they're up on YouTube. So, if you're on SoundCloud or want to make a SoundCloud account and follow me, you'll see them before YouTube. Or maybe if it's harder for you to get the download for the videos, then a bit of audio on SoundCloud for you. So I'm just Jim Dramatic on there as always. So I'll leave it just you know, I'll leave it just link in the description. And with that said, let's talk about Heat Eye then. And of course, the winner of Heat Eye was the one, one robot that will eventually be disintegrated into a billion pieces in the semi-finals, but enjoy it while it's still working in one piece. Splinter. <laughs> uh, Splinter. Grabbing arms. You still want me to do the Stefan Frank voice, guys? Or Oh, hell yeah. Oh, oh, hell... <laughs> okay, then I'll, I'll keep doing it. I'll keep doing it. <laughs> it's fine. I just, I, just, I, just, I just caught me off guard because I forgot you do it every time. <laughs> but, but Splinter is definitely a robot I'm always... I, I, do like, I do like Splinter. I mean, considering that it came from Ivanhoe, which wasn't a bad robot, I mentioned GBH before, obviously, but it wasn't a bad robot. It just kind of didn't really have anything going for it, apart from the design of it, maybe. Well, they thought it could roll over. It took two pushes to roll it over. That's apparently counts as being able to roll over. <laughs> but, but Splinter, actually, I do think for a very, for, it's quite, it's relatively effective for how simple it is. It is just a wedge with two little grabby arms on the side. But, but in fairness, that was quite unique. Nothing. I really had ever done that. Like no one had, like in in UK Robot Wars, had really had like side arms that like held people in place, like grabbers, rather hmm. than like a, you know, say a crusher or a pincer or whatever. I, you know, Splinter was quick. He was had good maneuverability. It was well driven. You know, the wedge. Okay, in the end, got wiped off by Hypno Disc, but for the most part, it was actually fairly good. And it, you know, while it did get crumpled a little bit, it it was sturdy and robust. And I, I actually thought Splinter was quite a not the most entertaining of machines, but quietly effective. I think that's why you know Splinter deserves a little bit more recognition than say they probably get. Hmm, I probably agree with that because Split. It was all throughout the heat. It was always very well driven, and also very, very. Also, its grabbers were always very effective at getting hold of the robot and being able to slam it against a wall or into an obstacle or something like that. And at the end of the day, it kind of proved. It kind of proved that even with a very well, a, a unique design, but not a very you know, overly complicated design. You actually can get very far by just having good driving skills and effective weaponry. So, 
it's sort of like it's sort of like in Stegosaurus, you know, last series. You know, it's not the most. It's very, it's very bit, you know, a very simple robot. Look, but looking at it, but with a lot of good driving skill and a bit of power, it actually is very effective. I mean, I really, I really like Splinter. It's just a shame that in yep. Series Five, it ends up getting. If, if it wasn't for Bigger Brother, it would have been. It probably would have won that heat, probably. Uh, in I my opinion, been close. It'd been close. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good machine, and I think you know. One thing, as I said last week, you know, one thing I really do enjoy about Splinter is that, you know, this team, every time they came back, you know, with Ivanhoe, then with Splinter, and then with Splinter Mark II, you know, every time there's a massive leap forward in terms of, you know, design and, you know, Im- implementation of the machine. I think, you know, they were a really good example of, you know, a team learning from their mistakes and seeing where they could go from, you know, e- evolving their design. Hmm. Well, what, what, what do you think of it, Nate? I definitely think that it was a worthy heat winner. I mean, a- after watching its heat again, I gotta say, it did everything right. I mean, Sam Sam pretty much said everything that I was about to say. You know, it had a very effective weapon with its uh, grabbing arms and its big wedge or scoop at the front, if you want to be technically. <laughs> it isn't a it podcast does. until Nate says wedge. It's true. true. It's true. Um... But, you know, you look at its fight against Killer Hertz, and you'd think, oh, well, they just got lucky. But if you actually go and watch it, they were top. able to... They... They... They, they didn't... Okay, I'm, I'm, Sorry, I'm losing my train I, of thought. I've just, I've discombobulated Nate. Hold on. <laughs> no, I discombobulate myself. Um, they were very... Uh, it was a very well-driven machine. It was very aggressive, and in all of its fights, it proved its effectiveness. I honestly think that it earned its heat victory. Although we won't say what happened next to it. Uh, yeah. well, particularly in semi-finals, more than anything. But yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, one of my mates, because um, I, I was doing a thing recently where I was watching a bit of Robots. He hasn't seen a lot of the later series, like around series five to seven onwards, so I like know that kind of stuff. So I was watching it and um you might remember there's a little preview for series five. Do you remember the robot Monad? Which oh, God. Yeah. Someone said he actually said it looks like Splinter's crackhead brother. It really I, I, does. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> it really does. It's like you know, it's, 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 you know he got he, he you know got a little bit wayward. Splinter's Splinter's twin that uh, <laughs> d- developed uh, an early alcohol abuse. Yeah, uh, problem. yeah, because it's, it's very it's very it's very loud. You know, it's very loud. It's very crass. It's very you know it's, it, it it makes a lot of noise but does nothing. It it really it really it really is like Splinter's like brother, but definitely gone on the wayward path. In, in, enough, enough about Monad, though. I think, you know, for, for the most part, Splinter, you know, in, in, in this series was like, would it have won every heat? Definitely not. You know, in some heats it could have ended up out in round one, but, you know, you get the, you have to make the most of the draw you get, and they certainly did, and I think, you know, even against when they fought Hitler Disc, it wasn't all, you know, I think the result flattered Hitler Disc quite a lot, you know. People often forget that Splinter held their own for quite a long time in that fight, and, mm-hmm. you hmm. know, it, it's, it's actually a really decent machine. It really is. It was. It could have been a contender in practically every war as it fought in. I mean, even in Extreme One, though it didn't have too many fights in the Annihilator, it proved just how much it um it was a step up from its uh, predecessor. You know, they ditched yeah. the plastic oil drum at the front in exchange for a uh, a metal scoop, yeah, yeah, for a fairly uh, powerful axe. Although I wouldn't say powerful, but it was an, an effective axe. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and Splinter managed to get a little bit of revenge for a uh, Hypnodisc series in the Extreme One as well. <laughs> well, we'll talk about well, we'll talk about it there because I'm in the uh, Extreme One Annihilator, the first one anyway, the the good one. The good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then we get to the robot that um, was runner up, and as I said many times before, I still don't really understand why this robot became a meme, but whatever. It is, of course, Eric. Eric. Alistair Sutherland, you beautiful man. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Meme bot. <laughs> I mean, as a robot, Eric is is fine, but there's there's nothing about like obviously excluding all the memes. Really, there's nothing about Eric that makes you go, "This is." I mean, actually, honestly, without the memes, I actually don't think Eric would be as mem you know as remembered. I don't know. Man. Well, it the has that paint job pretty... going for it. Yes, Nate, my man. <laughs> <laughs> The paint is awesome on Eric. It looks fantastic. You know, lurid green and flames, hot rod flames. Like, who doesn't want that? <laughs> and the eyes. Don't forget the big eyes. And the, you know, they kind of, I don't know, are they squinting? Are they angry? I just don't know. But Eric just looks fabulous. I, I, just I, I, I don't think Eric even knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Ah, oh, but I, I I do like Eric. It's a good. It's a really yeah. The, I said the paint jobs. It makes you stand out at least the paint job. But it's definitely a good robot. It you know just couldn't really compare to something. It couldn't really get a hold of a Splinter as well. Really, it did. It, it did nearly flip it, though, didn't it? At one point. At one point. And you know that could have really changed the whole course of the series. We never necessarily <laughs> would hit the disc have done as well as Eric against Eric. Maybe not, but. It's by the by. I mean, you know, Splinter dominated the fight for the most part. You know, it was, it was fairly even, but Eric was. I think you know, throughout the heat, Eric proved its worth as a decent contender. It did. It definitely. It showed it could have gone a lot further than it did in Series Three when it accidentally drove into the pit. So that was yeah. very. That was very unfortunate because they were actually uh, on top for the most part against King Buxton, and then. That was my favorite moment. That's my favorite pitting in Robot Wars history, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> No, my, my, mine will always always be reserved for um, the previous heat in the with Wheelie Saurus, uh, Prize Fighter, and, with, and Wheelie Big Cheese all going in the same pit. <laughs> pit party! Everybody's invited. Bring the family. Bring the kids. Bring the hot dog rolls. <laughs> you just, oh, don't, yes. just don't forget Eric. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I do. I have a soft spot for Eric, even if it's not. I mean, again, it's it's, it's definitely a very very good. It's just a decent, if you know, quite a good robot. It's just. Again, against Splinter, it was just more mount maneuvered if anything. Um, and then, of course, we get to the robot that is somehow seen is really, really high. As a matter of fact, not winning a single tournament, you know, any battle in the main in the main series up till now, uh, is uh, of course Kilohertz. Uh, Axe bot. I love I, I love, love Kilohertz. <laughs> my I I love John Reed, so therefore I love Kilohertz by definition, but. This is the last. I mean, this is the last series we see Kilohertz in. So it. And I'd say it's arguably the best. I mean, okay, look, they were lucky against Splinter. I mean, yes, they they were they had their problems and they broke down and Splinter were dominating them anyway. But in the Annihilate, I think is where we finally saw Kilohertz come good. It was uh, really good the series. Yeah, it was. Re- it was a really good show in the Annihilator. I mean, just taking on pretty much every robot it came in front of. With this, with this, with a, with a, I, I love the axe on Kilohertz still. The the bird axe from the, from series three and four, the little woodpecker axe. It, it's it's just a, it. Like, I mean, okay, look. It, I know it took him it took John Reed a while to get that that series of machines right. You know, it, it did. It took him a few 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 series to get it right. But when he did, you know, it worked really well. Obviously, Terahertz, as we saw in series six, did a fantastic job and continues to do so to this day. But you know, Kilohertz was unlucky. You know, I think it deserved a ranking. I don't think it deserved to be 16, you know, as, as has been probably mentioned endlessly, 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 because, you know, let's face it, C16 for a robot that went out in round one by its own accord is kind of pushing it. Yeah, I, I was giving it maybe like a C22, something like that, maybe. No, not even higher than that. I'd say probably 30-ish. 30, yeah. But, but you know, it is it is what it is, and, you know, Kilohertz is a, is a fine, fine machine, and it, you know, it could have done well. It could have won this heat quite easily if it didn't break down, but such is the way that Robot Wars works. If you don't work, then you're gone, and that was just how it was for them. That, that, that is the key principle. If you don't work, you don't win. <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, thankfully, he came back with Terahertz in Series 5, and then later on, the uh, the John the John Reed Terahertz story is history. Let's say it, it just happens. And, of course, they appeared yeah. in Series 8 and 9 as well, which is this massive... It's, I mean, it is massive, isn't it? The the, the new terror, like the more the newer terror, terror, terror hertz, isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's it, about the same size as me. Geez, and you're like just over six foot, aren't you? It, like, if if I was sat on the ground, like legs legs crossed, like I I would fit on top of terror hertz, no problem. Oh my god, <laughs> it's just weird to see there's the you know go from terror, you know, from kilohertz to terror hertz. I mean, especially in series two, where it was just driving all over the place <laughs> to. A really well controlled axe, and I guess yeah, I love I love John Reed. So come on, he's got he's, he's got the beard. <laughs> yeah, the, the the maniacal professor beard. What what are your thoughts on his machines, mate? Go on. Well, watching this scene, it's amazing just to see how young John Reed looks here. Yeah, not young, not super young, mind you, but he looks younger than he does now. Well, ever knows between uh, series seven and series eight, went to a mountain, meditated for a bit, learnt the way of terror, and then came back with his beard. It just happened that way. Went, and then when he brought Beta onto BattleBots, he uh, he uh, got in as Col- as a Colin Mockery look-alike. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously. He looks like Colin Mockery in the... I, uh... I, 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 see, I see that, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Killer Hurts. Honestly, I prefer Terra Hurts and Beta a lot more because even on Battle Bots, Killer Hurts, it didn't really seem. It seemed more successful based on its speed and driving than actually firing its axe. Although maybe that was just John Reed waiting for a good hit. Hmm. But also in America, there was there was less kind of uh, armor that could get through. Maybe because I feel like it, mm-hmm. I feel like in Robot Wars, a lot of things were like polycarb and. I mean, obviously, Destructible was made out of something. I, don't know, I forgot what it was made out of, but it wasn't. It definitely was something. Was able, able to get his axe straight through. Was it season one in Battlebots where like Kilohertz made it so far in the tournament without a weapon? Like it was, I think it was that crazy. was season two, but I I am not no, as well versed the, the on the two. classic Battlebots as uh as uh say Mr. Psycho is. So, same with me. I, I believe it was season one because in season two they lost to was it Gold Digger. Uh, yeah, I wanna... it was. It was. So, so I, I think I think it was season one. I'm not sure, but it was, you know, it was a, it was decent over there. That, maybe that's why it got such a high ranking because of its performances overseas. Who knows? But hmm. hang on, my dog. My hang on. Uh, you, you can talk for a minute. My dog wants to come in. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I mean, uh, te- I mean, oh, te- never mind. Never mind. My brother let her in. No, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I I do love te- I do I do I love kilohertz. I mean, oh, admittedly, I do like terahertz slightly more, just because, again, it's just it's just more well refined than kilohertz was. But kilohertz is still, again, with the, the axe alone makes it uh, makes it beautiful almost. But it was always great. And it was just a shame. I think particularly in series three was probably the, and and series four were the two series where it really could have had a good go. And of course, pits and something mechanical going wrong ends up being the. And Chaos 2 in the, in the International Special as well, obviously. Mm. Was, although they were, they were very close to taking them out, so... I don't yep. know if it could have... I don't think it could have beaten Thing 2 in Series 3. I don't think Especially so. Especially when you're going up against a driver as skilled as Nick Adams. Yeah, it was yeah, true. practically beat, And the wedge was, would have, was practically made to wedge. beat them. Wedge! <laughs> More wedges. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we have... Um, Another, another kind of, as Alex describes it, a very 2000s robot with all the polycarb and the metal and wood surrounding it and stuff. It is um, Small Talk. Small Talk. Vertical Spinner. Huh. Yeah. It's, I, I, okay, so I'm going to get my little piece in first. I know you two aren't really the biggest fans of Small Talk uh. comparative to All Talk, but I actually really enjoy uh, Small Talk. You know, I think it's a pretty fun little robot. It's not Okay, it's not a, maybe not as effective as all talk, but it, it it was something very different which you hadn't really seen. The spinning disc, okay, maybe wasn't the most powerful, but it was it was a nice idea to have something, you know, a weapon. Whereas all talk was just you know pure drive power, and I just I thought it was a pretty fun little thing. Um, I I, I can definitely say I don't agree. <laughs> I don't but, agree either. I mean, I don't hate. Sm- I think it's, I, I, it's one of those robots like I'm not a fan of, but at no point am I saying, "Oh, this is an example of a robot I really don't like," like um, Napalm or something like that. You know, this is just. It's. I mean, it's okay. It's, it wasn't terrible, but here's, I think the. I think the thing that gets me is just that weird, that weird way it has a, a, of the self writer, it has not it with the two little wheels sticking onto the other wheels, which just it, it just look, it just looks really odd. I mean, there's a difference between trying to be innovative and trying something new that might work, and then adding something onto something that didn't need to be done in the first place. They easily could have made the wheels go, th- you know, go through the, you know, the robot. Instead, they gave, made it so the saw comes one of the wheels, and it Ugh. it's just weird can to I, me. Can I just get into the logistics on how that doesn't work? If you want to. <laughs> okay, so when your disc is spinning vertically, it has to spin counterclockwise so that the front of the disc goes upwards when you get flipped over your disc is now rotating clockwise so if you're trying to go forward your disc is pushing against your your forward momentum that's probably the reason why they burnt they burn talk because you actually did notice in the battle it did go backwards a bit try it, and it seemed to stop i don't know if it tried to go forwards or not but i don't know I mean, it's, again i think just I think, I think the reason why i'm not i kind of Look at small talk slightly less. It's probably just I think just on the basis that I really really liked all talk in series three. I think um, I have a friend on Facebook who's the same way. Uh, but again, I don't hate small talk as much. I mean, hippopot- hippopotamus is a different story. Uh, don't go there. Um, let's, 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 ignore, let's ignore that for a second. Well, unfortunately, when we get to extreme, we're going to have to mention it at some point. Oh, but that's fine. You know, extremes, extremes ages away. We have two versions of the talk robot. We've got to talk about that and talk about. No offense. And each one of them. One of, 
is worse than one the last. One got into series five somehow, and the other one was quite literally arse. Yeah, I literally, yeah, I look, I look at robots like hippopotamus and think to myself, okay, Arnold, Arnold, Terminator wasn't allowed in. That was reasons. Yeah, re not. I don't know, I don't know, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of small talk. But again, I don't hate it. It's just. It, it just fucks it, 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 it doesn't do it for you it just fucks my logistic side you know what I mean it's a bit like Binky in series 3 it's not the worst thing ever but it just there's so many little small things that are weird and wrong about it that makes it just annoying to me but it's not even like I hate it it's just I mean I get it could be worse it could be a children's sandpit that gets beaten up by Stinger so one last yeah. observation I have about small twerk <laughs> those teeth on the disc are tiny just there little... is no there is no way that thing could have done any reasonable damage just put on a circular saw and call it a day <laughs> it, did, it did it did it did make a nice noise against eric though in the battle that little high pitched noise that dead metal gets as well sometimes <laughs> yeah that little noise yeah. uh and then of course the probably the biggest disappointment of this heat which is again it's the way that road wars goes is of course centurion the 31st uh... centurion axe and flipper it lasted a good. I mean, as far as I'm aware, it lasted a good, what, ten seconds after a, after a nice a nice beginning, and then, of course, a movable link shenanigans happen, and then. Oh, what a sh what a shame! Because Century in this this particularly this series compared to last series, while it's not changed too much aesthetically, the biggest difference really is the bigger flipper on it, which and it was much it, more it powerful. Was, it was it was a pneumatic flipper rather than lifting forks, and I have to say, could it have? Won the heat? I, mean, I personally think, I think it could have. It almost it almost I flipped think, over Splinter in the first hit, so it's I possible. Think, I think had it had it got underneath Splinter properly, just yeah. not a clancing blow. I think it, it could have. It, 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 it could have. Game over. It, it, it would. It definitely would be able to pop, probably be able to flip over Kilohertz as well, or have a good go at Kilohertz, and I don't think Eric would have caused it much problems either. So I, I think it probably could have been a potentially a heat winner. But again, it's just, this is the way Road Wars goes, isn't it? Sometimes you get a robot that just it's, something something happens to it, I and then. So, I have to say, like Ray, Ray Tate, you know, look at his, you know, his record here. Obviously, Centurion Mark One was quite unlucky against 101. Here was quite unlucky as well. But you know, you look at his robots as well. You know, Skeletron from Techno Games. You know, the, these Aww. machines are so beautifully made and they're very, very, very technically advanced. And he was horrifically unlucky. Skele and it kind of makes me, re it makes me really happy that eventually he did join up with uh, Steve Merrill from Sacrum a lot. And obviously, they had. I'd say mixed success, but in fairness, you know, I think they were more about fun anyway than those two. So I think it would have been, it was, it was great to see that, you know, he, he had a, a bit of fun with a decent machine. As, as I mean, well. I mean, as we know, the contribution he made to um, Sir Chromelot is the most important thing he's ever done in robotics. Everyone knows that. I mean, Skele I mean, yeah, Skeletron. Uh, who cares? Sir Chromelot. That's that is where it's at. <laughs> But I yeah I I I love I love Skeletron I love Centurion and you know talk about Sekromo obviously but I I it's just the same this is probably one of the bigger disappointments of the series just for that reason but again it's it's something you just can't help sometimes that kind of thing happens and at least yeah at least he made Skeletron and that's still going around today which is actually really impressive even now it's still it's still great even today looking at it and how amazing it looks yeah, but it's, Skeletron's a beautiful piece of engineering but obviously you know Centurion is, uh, Centurion is as well I believe. There's... I mean, there's a reason why Skeletron is the mascot of Techno Games, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But... Nate, anything to add? I, um, I really wish we would, uh... I'd love to see Ray Tate and, uh... his brother Matt and his son James, uh... return to Robot Wars somehow, because, you know, if he can build something as amazing as Skeletron, I would like to see him, uh... build something crazy. Not necessarily good, but just something... something out there. Mm. I'm sure you could probably do it. I mean, there's there's lots of things that haven't been tried yet, so you never know. I mean, otherwise, one ends up like jellyfish or worm, would we? <laughs> nope, this is true. Nope. This is true. Um, and then, of course, finally, probably the probably one of the funniest designs of this series, in my opinion, just for how, and also because it's just so funny, and it's also got a pun, which is the best thing about this robot, obviously, is a uh, destructor bubble. Destructor bubble, mother-in-law's tongue. I love uh, I love Destructor Bubble. I do too. <laughs> I I think it's I mean I actually really think it's like next series actually really quite a cool robot because it was a big overhead axe, hasn't it, in series five? But in se series four, when that like first appeared in the sumo, what the heck? I mean I think JP's reaction where he just burst out laughing at this great mammoth <laughs> sphere. It's great. <laughs> and it's just it's there's just 
there's so much wrong with this drug world, but it's just so great and I love it. It's just wonderful. Actually, any, have, have, have any of you seen the alternate design they went for for Series 6? They didn't qualify off ultimately for Series 6, but they, had, they basically had the, the, the identical looking robot on Series 6, but they also had a different design for it. And I'll try and I'll get an image up for it now on the thing, but if you go on the wiki and stuff, it looks like it's got the it's got one of those kind of I've seen things type <laughs> face. It looks so horrified compared to like the kind of half a half awake type face as normally. Uh, is it dr- is it meant to be drunk? Is that what it's meant to be? I don't know. It's it's like it's been caught mid wink, but then I don't know if it's got a, you know got a bad eye. I don't know if it's got a lazy eye. I don't know if it's got. I, 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 I don't know if it's trying. I don't know if it's drunk. I don't know if it's tired. I don't know. I, I, don't, know if had, I don't know if it's had a stroke. I don't know what's happened to it. There's many alternatives to what happened to just the ball, but. <laughs> but just love like how it has leave that your... hat. Leave your creative comments of what happened to the structure of the wall in the in the box in the comments below. I love the bowler hat. Why the... is there a bowler hat on it? I don't know. It's it's it's, it's, it's like something that it's like it's like they took it from Major Tom, and just plonked it on the structure ball. But it's wonderful. I adore the structure of the ball. It's just it's such an out there design. It's also... going to be useless in the arena. Of course it is, but it's yeah. great and I love it. Also, the fun fact: this is actually the lightest robot in the heat. It's a lot of empty space. Clearly, <laughs> if it's, yeah. if it's... <laughs> I, I love how the, I think you know the, the notes in the um, stat board said it was made out of carbon fiber. That yeah, is expensive. Right. <laughs> how, how much? It's, it's like the Diotor team. How much carbon fiber do they have? Like to how much fur they had. It's like they must have a if, if budget. That, if, if that is made out of carbon fiber, that is costing upwards of like you know a few thousand pounds. And, so, you know, you know, you got robots like you know Razor costing a few thousand in those days, or I, know, I mean, Hitler disc or whatever, and then they chose to build. This it's it's this a it's it's a meter tall. I mean, this must have cost a lot. <laughs> After all that, first round. I I don't care. I love it. I, think I know. Like, it's it's just wonderful. It's great. I mean, I just love the, I love the idea that the weapon is a mother-in-law's tongue. It's just it's up there with a killers like axes that can crush a strawberry. It's that kind of level of just <laughs> just not giving a shit, but having so much fun about it. And of course, actually, um, a little fun fact: on like uh, just just like a few other competitors this series, they actually do better in their series five appearance than they do in the series four appearance somehow. Yep. Because accident. Yep. Lasted like two seconds, so that's probably the reason why they won. <laughs> I, I I just love this 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 team's like you know they've clearly got clever engineers in their team. You know, if they're having you know complex machinery hey, gu- and such inside. Guys, uh, uh my computer uh shut shut down via power surge, uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna be on my phone for a bit. That's okay. That's fine. Last, 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 long as you, last as long as you can. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what did I miss? Uh, Undestructible, because we, we, just we're, looking. We're, at we're just saying it's wonderful. We're just we're just saying I how much the carbon fiber must have cost, considering it's like a meter tall. <laughs> that is not carbon fiber. It looks like it's some kind of plastic. No, it is. According to the notes, and notes are obviously always reliable. It does say the shell is carbon fiber, so I'm guessing that's what it's made of. <laughs> <laughs> if that's made of carbon fiber, then I'm the Archduke of Turkmenistan. Hello, Arch. <laughs> hello, 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 Archduke. How are you doing? <laughs> but uh, uh, of, of, of course, that is all the robots. Enough about bubbles. More about battles. And speaking yeah. of the bubble, uh, it's in the it's in the first battle. Killer hurts Eric and Destructor Bubble. And there's some courage bubbling up in this one. Uh, you did, in you did. Fairness, this in fight fairness, was actually nothing really happened. No, actually, the one thing I did like about this fight though is it wasn't. It was like a tamer version of the Bayamoth Rambot and Arnold Arnold Donald Terminator fight. Because while you know, again, not much actually happened in this battle. At least all three robots were at least trying. It wasn't like one robot was just doing nothing the entire battle. I mean, Destructible did at least get a few goes with the Lance and actually did come into the action once in a while. And it was basically it was mostly Eric and Killerhertz fighting. Let's face it, but it was at least at least it wasn't like there was something happening. It wasn't like just it wasn't like the uh, Invertebrat battle a few heats ago where oh, what, yeah. that broke down. The other two slowly bumped into each other and tapped each other occasionally. But this one actually all three at least were in the battle. But at the end of the day, it's kind of obvious why Disruptible was eliminated because they were the least aggressive out of the three. Yeah. In fact, what what how could they be really aggressive though? Because it's a five mile an hour dome with a spike that could barely do much. So I guess I guess I can understand why they couldn't really do much, but it's just unfortunate. If they were in another heat, they might have passed maybe. At least the first round, if they're depending on what, if they're they've been in like um, in a uh, evil evil's heat or something. Yeah, possibly. I gotta say this about Destructo Bubble though: there is no way that spike could hit anything. It's like half a foot off the ground. Actually, in fa- actually, in fairness, it was around the right height to hit these two robots. 
Uh, it's, mm. it's it's not as high as something like Spike in Series Three with a little tiny. Oh god. Yeah, that that one that was too tall. They couldn't even hit Blade, and that was about a mid-sized robot. But no, I think the Spikes these not the not the worst height in the world. But it's. I do like though. Um, I do like though that uh, the bits where uh, Killer Hertz was riding on Eric's wedge. <laughs> My, my, yeah, my favorite bit of this, as I think we mentioned it last week, was when Killer Hurts was like being, like sort of lifted up on Eric, and then, like it's but it spears through the top of uh, Destructible Bubble and kind of like <laughs> rocks the whole machine over. That was, that was a great moment. They all, they all got stuck. They all got, they all got stuck together at one point. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, while it wasn't the most eventful battle in the world, I mean, it was kind of obvious that Destructible was probably eliminated based on the performance of what I saw. So. It was yeah, a, it was a but... fun battle. Everybody uh, contributed something. No one was off blowing bubbles. Yeah, uh, I'm forever blowing bubbles. Uh, I was forced. Pretty bubbles in and, the air. And then, and then, and then, of course, we all. And then, of course, the major highlight of this battle was when Killer Hertz unfortunately popped, destruct a bubble. <laughs> if, yeah. The whole robot just popped. Then it was actually made out of a bubble. I'll be just. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been, been, been great. All, all that was left was the hat. <laughs> <laughs> but I hate, I hate to burst your bubble, but they they went out. Oh. So oh 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 mine. Oh yeah, mine's mine's over top. Oh, yeah. I hate you people. <laughs> it's all mine, man. It's all mine. <laughs> if as that was the most obvious bubble pun I could think of, so. And yeah. then, but again, the first two round round battles aren't that eventful overall, because in the second one, Centurion, Splinter, and Small Talk. I mean, Centurion gets a good blow, almost flipping over Splinter in the very, like, first few seconds. And then, obviously, it goes around Shunt, see, I think, and then it just, then that's when the link comes out, and then... I mean, Small, got, Talk, got Small Talk didn't do anything this entire battle. It didn't really need to. <laughs> it got yeah, caught true. in the suck zone, as Mr. Psycho says. It kind of was. I mean, it... It, I mean, it had the potential to be at least a good battle between Splinter and Centurion, maybe, with Small Talk trying to do something, but... It, I mean, if it, if, it, if it lasted the full fight and all robots are working, I think probably Small Talk might have gone out, potentially. I mean, considering that... I would, with I'm, you, because uh, Splinter at least could do something. As I said, when we were talking about Small Talk, I do not think that that puny disc could do any reasonable damage. It's not about damage. I guess it's more the case it just wouldn't have a, a very offensive presence to kind of do any do anything to the other robots, yeah. I guess. And well, that, and I, th that... I, think other, I think the other two machines had uh, like, clearly had like the superior weaponry compared yeah. to um, I mean, the only, the only way theoretically Small Talk would have gone through is that Splinter had been successfully flipped over and couldn't self-right or something like that, and then... Yeah. Or something like that, but... It, I mean, the, again, the fight was really over in the first 10 seconds, so there wasn't really much else to talk about for the rest of it, so... Yeah, I mean, just yeah, that, 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 that's the way Robot Wars goes, unfortunately. It's the last time we see Centurion, but we will get to see... If you watch you watch Techno Games, you'll see Skeletron, and you'll still see Ray Tate in series of what five and extreme onwards. So he's not gone, but his robot is forgotten, unfortunately. Um, bubbles. <laughs> bit late, but whatever, we'll go with it. Uh, it's fine. I'm gonna say that now because I probably won't get the chance to say it later for the rest of the heat. I suppose you won't. Um, and then there's no sumo, so it's easier for me to edit at least. But we do have at least our um, our one other side event still going. The yes, uh, the pinball. And it is King King B three, and this was a uh, very my, very my good boy, run. My boy King Simon, bigger. God, come on, <laughs> I love Simon. And this was actually a really good run, two hundred and twenty five points. I mean, I mean, mm. on, honestly, the only way they could have done better is they managed to get that. They were so close to getting the seventy five point target at the end. Actually, twice they tried if, to get. If, if, it. They, if they'd have got that, they'd have they'd have won. Exactly, they they, 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 they were so close to winning they, the whole thing. Yeah, they, they didn't get it the first was, time. They pressed it just before the timer ran out. No. I thought they had it. No, actually, what happened was they sped towards it, and I think he hit it just on the side of the... He didn't actually hit the... He hit it just on the side... He rammed in the wall on the side of it and didn't actually hit the button. And then... Buzz, I, and mean, then uh, I have to say, if if King B or any... You know, obviously, we all know the winner of the pinball is Gemini. <gasps> Spoilers! But oh, no! It, okay, if, if, if King B had won this, I think it would have been quite a testament to the robot itself because you look at Gemini Gemini's two robots Joe, it, it would it would be better it would be nice than, than seeing Gemini winning three awards in one series you know give, give one to King B why not in fact, you know Gemini's built for the pinball because let's face it it's two robots doing one course whereas everyone else is at an unfair advantage so to speak but hmm. I mean it was, it's, it, was it's uh, it was a really good run I mean it was just a shame I mean honestly the game got the 75 point target it would have won but Again, oh, close. Big, big up to my uh, man Simon. It was a very good run. 
Uh, yeah, for fourth overall in the uh, in uh, the fourth war. So you know, yeah. hey, that's something to be proud of. Definitely. Yep. Um, and we get to the battles, of course, the first, second round, the Words first. Of, uh, Don Cherry, a great run by a great guy. Way to go, Simon! Yay! I love Simon. Hopefully, hopefully we'll try and <laughs> hopefully we'll try and get him for series five again. That'd be cool to get. But um, and then of course we have um, Kilohertz versus Splinter, which. Obviously, for the most part, Splinter was definitely dominating this battle. It was it. It, it, it Kilohertz was the perfect size for Splinter to just get hold of. The size was yeah. a perfect shape too. It really was. It was just built. To, it was like a Tetris piece. It was just perfectly built to fit, you know, w- Kilohertz in. I, and I get, you know, as, as we said earlier, you know, this is a fight where you think, okay, so the superior engineering from John Reed would come out and just come out on top, and it, it just didn't because Splinter was better driven on the day. It was it was great to watch. And okay, could could it have gone another way? Okay, you know, Kilohertz did break down in the end. Maybe it could have come back, but hey, you know what? You've, you've got to be you've got to win it, be in it to win it. And you know, Kilohertz broke down. That's the way it is. Also, was it was it Stuart driving um, Splinter? Stuart Whiteman. Yes. Stuart yeah. He yes. Oh, prop, props to him. Now he's a very good. He was very good driver, particularly in, in this series. He was really good driver. Yeah. Actually, I just mentioned that, but. That, that was, yeah, it was 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 Stuart the dad or was Stuart the boy? This is the problem. Was, I, I'm I, I'm I'm terrible with these kind of names. It was the young dad. Uh, it was well, the young lad. I think I think it was. My my computer's now rebooting, so I can't. If you want to wait a few minutes, uh, I can check. We'll, we'll get him on the end of the heat. But, but yeah, um... yeah, I'm sure we will. But um, actually, the thing was, was I mean, there was a lot of pushing around, really, Splinter to dominate, and then of course, Kill- Kilohertz goes into shunt CBZ. I think it was that axe blow that caused the problems. After as soon as that axe blow happened, something went wrong with Kilohertz, and it just shot off into the corner and just slammed into the wall and stuck, got stuck in forward drive. I mean, got a bit hot. I mean, you saw the bit of that shot. You see the shot where it's in the same booth where John Reed is, and you can see Kilohertz fl- go flying across the ring. You can see him trying to desperately turn the. Him just turning the bit, like they say, I'm trying to go left. It's not going left, and it just it it, it did a behemoth in the uh, series seven, and just I was about to say slammed that. around, slammed all over the place. And I, th- I think Kilohertz forgot. I think it was going back to its roots in series two, of just <laughs> yeah. ramming, in, of just getting stuck in forward drive. Because it seemed to, it didn't do it at all in series three, but in series two it did it pretty much in its intro. It did it. So I thought, I oh, know, I'll, I'll do this again. And I think I think that's a speed controller issue. I think. I. Th- Thing. It sounds like something. Yeah. That is a I'm, 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 I'm just saying it's. I'm just saying technical jargon, hoping that one of them will be right eventually. <laughs> oh, uh, one, <laughs> one little <laughs> observation I have. No, no, no. One little observation that I have about uh, Killer Hertz in, in this fight. Uh, I mentioned about how you know Killer Hertz was both the perfect size and shape. I don't think it really could have done a lot of effective damage to Splinter outside of just uh, making a few holes. No. Um, I don't know if you uh. If you read, if you read the comments on uh, your post on the Facebook group, but uh, Leo Van Meert, who uh, and I'm hoping I'm saying the name right, um, he eventually bought Splinter from the Whitemans. Uh, Splinter's electronics were actually fairly deep inside the robot. Yeah, there's there's a lot of air gap. Like they they said that before they fought Hitler, just saying you know they've got a good air gap around the, the armor and the. Yeah, uh, a, a, a little bit like what um, it Frost, didn't help, but little, you know, basically similar to what Frostbite did in Series Nine when they all survived Supernova. And what did in uh, Series Seven. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's it's, a, it's not a worse tactic in the world. I mean, hell, but yeah, it kept all the electronics safe for the most part. But I mean, yeah. the, I mean, the, the, the only thing that happened really was at one point when when uh, Splinter was trying to attack Killer, you actually saw its di- its uh, wedge get buckled slightly. Like it, just, it, I mean, it's 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 a bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> but it, I mean, that's all. Yeah, we, so. well, uh, we told you so. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I thought your voice had changed for a second, then, Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all, me doing Jonathan on. Pierce again. It's all right. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the Ericning, Eric and Small Talk, and on this. I mean, this battle, honestly, until the flip, did anything actually happen that was actually any significant? I think Small Talk nicked a wheel. I think it just, I, you heard that noise when it ran into the armor briefly, and then it, it just hit the yeah. backside of Eric. It didn't really, just scratched it and do anything to it. And then, Walker yeah. Th- make funny noises. And then they managed to get a good flip on them. And then, I think it was the same thing he was talking about Nate before with the disc. Like, I could see him going backwards, was quite easy, but then I think they tried to go forwards at one point, and it just, then it sat on fire. Uh, I don't know, it must have been something to do with the motors or something, because oh, oh, they, they didn't have a cooling system as well, and that didn't work either. Yeah, so, I, I, think, I think it was. I think the weapon was like throwing a out. bag of ice onto a campfire. 
It doesn't surprise you, considering the disc couldn't go the couldn't couldn't make the robot go forwards potentially with the way it was turning. So I, I don't know. It, it just it just it did, it did the thing that every all talk robot did prior to this and just burnt up. Apart from the first, actually, apart from the first one. <laughs> actually, um, that is uh, it, you kind of did say what I was gonna say about a uh, small torque in that when it was uh, flipped over, it did the thing, as we say here in the Northeast when it comes to robotics. Did the thing. Yeah, well, it, Brandon explained it on one of our podcasts, but whenever a robot of any sort is beached on its weapon, we say it's doing the thing. All right. Uh, okay. I mean... And Small Torque is in fa- did, in fact, do the thing, and that's why it lost. It did the thing. I was, I was thinking of Thing from Series 3 for a second, then. Thing too. I was like, I couldn't think of what I couldn't think what thing did there, but uh, no, no, no. That's that thing that you do. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. What I mean, but I mean, this fight was kind of uneventful prior to the flip, and then after the flip, that's basically I think what what caused the uh, issues. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I mean, Eric won. So, yay! More power to Eric. <laughs> we love. We love you. Um, and then obviously, there's no sumo, so we go straight to the final. I know, shocking. Uh, Splinter versus Eric, and I will say actually, I really, I think this Heat final was probably the best, bu- best battle of the Heat, hands down. I'd agree. It was the only, it was the only really fully eventful battle like throughout the whole thing, and you know, it was one of the few Heat finals that went to a judge's decision, uh, like you know, where both robots were properly working, but like Behemoth and Exterminator, and I really, I mean, it, it definitely, I mean, it, the winner was kind of obvious. I mean, I do think. Splinter was the deserved winner, obviously, but at the same time, it, it, it could have uh, had things been different. You know, I think had say Eric got underneath a bit better, it could have lifted over Splinter. It, I think it could have gone either way. Hmm. I agree. Um, I think the biggest problem with Eric, I think, oh, with this lot, Eric, well, well, Nate might come back for a sec. Oh, <laughs> are you? You keep you keep coming back and coming on. Are you? Are you, are you still here? Are you still here, Nate? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, let's, let's let it carry on. Carry yeah, on. yeah, but I was saying like, uh, unlike um, something like Senshu, which has quite a wide flipper, I think Eric's biggest problem was the fact the flipper was very narrow. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's that. It had the wedge a bit at the front, but I think if it didn't get that, if it didn't, ha- if it had that under it, and most what it'd do is like lift the robot up and not flip it. While if it had a bigger flipper, I think it would have been a lot more successful. But it, yeah, it, 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 it would have worked if the flipper was a bit lower, for, for, at a lower angle. So that it had um, much more room to move, or if it was a little uh, longer. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say yeah, I'd say more. It's definitely the angle, and definitely the. I also, if it was slightly wider, I think it probably would have been a lot more effective. We could have flipped over Splinter pretty easily, because Splinter does have a decently high ground clearance, considering. But I mean, at the end of the day, though, this battle well, it was very, it was very, very competitive. But I do think at the end of the day, definitely Splinter was the winner in this one because they, the mo- they were the most aggressive. I mean, hell, they even have Eric pinned against the wall in the final few seconds, so. Which, yep. is, which is, I mean, it was, it was a very good show from Splinter, and again from uh, Stuart and or Craig. We can never, we still haven't determined which one's the. Uh... I think it might be. I think it was Stuart. I think Stuart was the, the kid. I, don't I know. think, I think so. I think... I, either way, whichever, whichever weight man it was, it was a. It's, it was it's, a great yeah, it's, it's funny because Mister Zygo said that you know it's nice to have people talk, know who know what they're talking about. We don't even know who the son is, so yeah. we're, we're we're experts clearly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so Splinter yeah. won the heat. Um, and honestly, very deservingly so. On I mean, it was a very good performance all around. Um, so, out of ten, what would you give this heat? We'll, we'll start um, with yeah. We'll start with Sam first then. Okay, no, okay. Uh, I'd say probably a seven for me. I I, I think you know, the the variety of machines were clearly there. They all worked mostly. Hmm. You know, I mean, there was there was only one fight that you know. Okay, so obviously the second round fights they all kind of started breaking down a little bit. But in the first round, you know. It was, it, they all, they all were effective. Hmm. I I think you know it was a pretty fun heat. You know the side event as well with King the pinball. King B did a great job. Hmm. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fun, I believe. I I would give it a seven as well, actually, because again, while I didn't say you know it's the most exciting heat for me in the world, it's still a solid heat. There's nothing really wrong with the heat. There's no rubbish decisions. There's no you know really bullshit bits with house robots or whatever or something like that. It's just. It's just lots of decent battles. It's just I think for me there's no kind of you know standout peak moment at any point. There's no like in you know like in like in the semi-finals there's no like him just ripping up Splinter. Or there's no you know something like you know something like that. There's no like every heat shove at least for me have to be really memorable has at least one bit that makes you go that's what I remember that heat for. But I remember it for lots of good battles. But kind of, I think that's why that's why it starts blurring into one because I remember all the decent battles but not really anything that goes that was the best bit of the heat. So. But it was still a very good heat, and definitely had a very good heat final, anyway. 
Um, yeah. What, what about you, uh, Nate? Well, first of all, I would like to confirm that Stuart was the dad. Okay. Oh, so it was Craig well, 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 well done, Craig, then. <laughs> Mystery solved. Mystery solved. <laughs> so out of ten, what would you give this heat, then, Nate? Um, I was initially going to give it a five, but after hearing the arguments and looking back on it, I would also give it a seven. I think anything below a seven would have to have something that would seriously hold it back, like having bullcrap judges' decisions, controversial moments, or any BS involving the house robots, but there was really none of that in here. I think the most you could say about this heat was that it was inoffensive. Yeah. Shall we say. Like, the battles weren't the most memorable, but they were at least fun, and as Sam mentioned, we got a great destru- great variety of robots. We got Splinter, we got Centurion, we got Killer Hertz, we got Destructive Bubble, we got Eric. <laughs> <laughs> It was a very good variety. Um, and then, of course, I got to do the preview for uh, Heat G. Heat G. Heat J. J. That's a G. I, I, I said J. I was saying G, but then I, I went slowly into J. So it's not like a G. <laughs> Heat J. Um, and I'm a professional, obviously. Uh, I, I know I know what comes after I in the alphabet. And oh, now this Heat. This is one of those Heats that I always remember I liked. And then I watch it. And then I don't really care about it as much and then it's more i mean this is out of the way it's more of a six than a seven to me but it's not terrible it's just i think yeah it's just the, this is the point where it really starts getting a bit kind of averagey around midway through this series but there are some decent looking robots in the heat and of course we do get uh, another bullshit seed as the heat winner of course stinger seed 30 for su- for some reason I, I still don't know why stinger's a seed at all. I mean, all they uh, did was drive into the pit. Uh, pass. Yeah, I the don't... Is, the, the, the thing is as well, like, okay, with, even with this, okay, Blade and Trident is obviously known that they were originally going to be seen in this series as well. Yeah. And, you know, but they had to withdraw and then two more seeds had to be added later on. This was already a seed. This is going to be 32. Yeah, and I obviously thought... suicidal tendencies and centurion were added in later on. It's I, mean, like... I mean, there are a few robots I think could have easily been better seeded. For example, I think Invertebrat could have possibly got a low seed. All Talk yep. could have got a small seed, maybe. Berserk yeah. two. Well, Berserk, well, Berserk got a seed. I mean, like robots that didn't get a seed that could have got one. Oh, oh, right, that's right. I forgot. I mean, the two ones I think Invertebrat and All Talk, I think, who maybe could have, you know, maybe given them a seed lower down, but. Stinger just, I don't know, it just, again, in hindsight, you know, it's like, oh, fair enough, you know, it's, it's great. Also, the lowest seed to ever make it into a uh, grand final, and a semi-final. So, you yep. know, that, that is something, imagine, there's nothing even lower than 30, I guess, so it's kind of got an impossible barrier to break. But, I mean, I love, I, I do love Stinger, though. I mean, it is the essential flak bot before Gabriel came along. And yeah. it's just a shame that because of the no weapons policy, they weren't allowed into Series 7, because... I would love to have seen these guys, but come back in you know, for the very last series, the classic series. But, but again, Stinger? oh sorry, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, say Stinger. That it's its biggest asset really was. I think the only thing I didn't like about it was while it was very, it was relatively, it was it wasn't the best control, but again, it's a flat bot. I think it's the, the only thing that kind of lets me down for Stinger is that while I do like it, it did rely a lot on other robots running into it. As opposed to Sting actually actively being against him, like unlike Hitler Disc, after you know, or any spinner that comes up towards something with its disc, I've noticed that Stinger mostly would just spin in a spot, although occasionally, and then hope the hope it does damage with its mace. It always did, but I don't know. I mean, you 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 were saying it. As a kid, I never really liked Stinger. I thought it was really boring and it wasn't all that effective. But after I watched its series four run and looked back on some of its other fights, I actually grew to really enjoy it. Yeah, as 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 it like as I've grown older, I appreciate Stinger a lot more. One thing I will say though is obviously when the um when the weight limit was increased, and obviously they went up to 100 kilos in series six instead of series five. But that's by the by. In series six, they didn't really have the same speed anymore they were they didn't really improve the drive and they were quite sluggish and i think that kind of hampered them it, it, it was eight, eight, it was 18 miles an hour when it was 80 kilos when it was 100 i think it was like 12 and that kind of you know th- speed with a thwack bot is kind of essential also i don't know why but the, the wheel design in series 6 is just off to me it looks like a colander had little holes in it, it looks like oh, they're like spikes yeah well they're like little bumps golf spikes yeah it, it, it looks like it's been shot from the inside, and they just man- bullets haven't just managed to get out. It look it looks a bit messy, for my liking. But I don't know. It's, I mean, it still it doesn't mean make much of a difference in the long run, obviously. But I, st- I, d- I do love Stinger. 
but I do think the thwack bot in my heart will always be Gabriel. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. G- Gabriel's wonderful. Gabriel actually is, is basically what Stinger would be if the, if it's like got its peak potential, and that's what Gabriel is basically. Yeah, G- G- Gabriel just... is, the, is, is the ultimate design of thwack bot. Like, like, there's like unless I can't really think of any way of improving it because it has this you know fantastic you know clutch system inside that enables the body to stay still and bring down all this momentum at once. It's it's great. I... It's a fantastic piece of engineering. I just love those big HDPE wheels on it. <laughs> because you look at it and you go, oh, geez, those things are going to get wrecked. And then I and saw it in don't. action against Ironside 3 and I went, that's, they're, they barely even nicked. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they take a lot, they, they take, they shock, have a lot of shock absorbance in the plastic. Both their, their size and their flexibility. Uh, I just love, I just love when those wheels wobble in the arena. Like those, the, the crowd really gets into it. Too. It's, it's, it's hypnotic. When was, hypnotic. When I was reading um, Battle, uh, BattleBots update um, for for this heat when Gabriel was in it, um, I was kind of going completely off topic here from Stinger. But when when there was these great pictures of like you know the like the stills of when the wheels were completely flexing out and like wobbling in such a way where like they were like bending in half it was wonderful like photography it's beautiful like, isn't it but anyway back to i mean yes I mean, yeah, Stinger, Stinger, Stinger is great definitely series four is obviously their their best moment ever and unfortunately in yeah. series five they had to go against s3 which was they were very unlucky in the next couple of series to be fair particularly in series six in their first round melee and the second round, they had Fluffy in round two. I mean, yeah, and they had Thermidor two, didn't they? And uh, who else? They had Thermidor two Chomplot, and Chomp. Chomp Lot and Thirty Black. That's not good. In round in round, in round one, that's a, evil. A powerful, you know, a really a, a decent crusher, a powerful spinner, and a pow- and and <laughs> a powerful flipper. It was, and then going against Fluffy, which is also one of the big threats from series five. You know, just yeah. Wow. That whole heat was was amazing. But anyway, back to Heat J for series four. Yep, and we got Breed. Bulldog Breed 2, yes. And the original, let's face it, did absolutely nothing. Interference, as Series 3 liked to do a lot, just fucked with them. And even I don't think we've done that well, even if Interference weren't, weren't, wasn't there. The yeah, si- the, sl- sl- sluggish, sluggish machines, both of them. But, I, I, um, I will this say... It was obviously a lot more effective. It was a lot more effective, but I will admit, I remember this robot being a lot better than it was. Like, I mean, obviously the Bulldog Breed from Series 5 Extreme 1 onwards is pretty much like the really powerful one. But and it just gets more. You know, the perfect is it just ref, they refine it over time. Both getting, both times being in series five and six going against Hypnodisc, of course, because yeah, you know, they, because the producers seem to hate them for some reason. But <laughs> um, Bulldog Breed Two, it I think its biggest problem is the speed. It, I think had Bigger Brother been working, there would have been no problem. N- no, because it had that have, have, have gone. They'd also, have, also it's really the wedge wasn't fully on the ground either. <laughs> in yeah. <series>. Also. <laughs> <laughs> also, one at at uh, looking at its design, that flipper. There's no way that flipper is powerful enough to get it back on its wheels. It really yeah. isn't. It's the wrong shape as well. If it was rounder, it's just a pyramid, and pyramids are one of the worst shapes to make a. It, it kind of looks like Chaos Two slightly in yeah. shape. I, th- I think that was the inspiration. It looked like Chaos Two just smushed it. Yeah, yeah I mean, that I mean was the inspiration for it, but the flipper wasn't powerful enough to to bend it. That's why Chaos Two had those kind of like um, rounded edges on the back. Yeah, and also it was the last design to have the little docky tail on the back. <laughs> yep. Before they went to. I just love that it's got a big, uh, big weight in its, um, in its paint job. I always love the paint job on the uh, bulldog breed robots. Yeah, I will admit the series six version was a bit boring. It was just a face. I, yeah. I, I prefer the full. Like I love the one, I love the one in series five as well. <laughs> the one where the, where he's got, he's like you know flexing. I love it. I mean, I do love the bulldog breed team. It was glad to see it finally, just like Atomic in. Um, in series seven, they finally managed to get a heat, you know, a win a heat, which is very nice to see finally. But and yeah, well, and it, it's funny because it, it, the, the the parallels between Bulldog Breed and Atomic too, and I this just floated into my head. Both both ser- um uh, both machines made the heat final in series four. Both machines lost to eventual grand finalists. Both machines came back in series five. Both machines were beaten by Hypno Disc. In the case of Bulldog Breed, it was twice. Both machines made the Heat final, no, no, made the made the semifinals in Series Seven. Both got to the second round of the semifinals, and both lost to Spinners. And also, yep. even a weird, also because of, because of Series Five, both won their Annihilator qualifiers, and both had to withdraw because of the same robot beating them. Yeah, this is like it, Centurion cause it... and Weldor all over again. <laughs> Although at least yeah. they, at least they don't look identical. <laughs> that's the only that's the well, only benefit. Got flippers. 
That's basically it, though, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> different designs with different motifs. But, but at, at least, at least, unlike some robots like Smidsey, who never managed to get a win, you know, win a heat. At least, at least there is a light in the tunnel for Bulldog Breed eventually. So there is yes. that. There is at least that. Unlike all in this particular series, actually, although in the future, very similarly, Bigger Brother. The the, de- the bigger the, brother. The definitive look, obviously, because in series three it was just a massive wedge with a little with a, with a little camp um, wavy space thing that what, just what, fell what, off. Morning, morning star flail. Yeah, it fell off after Ultra rammed that into thing it. Could have hurt me. No, it would never. Have. I don't know. Depends, depends how turns out tough you want. But um, this version, obviously, this is basically the look that Bigger Brother will pretty much remain for the most part. The way it looks. And it's refi- well, it's definitely refined from series four to series five. Um, Can we just acknowledge how good of a driver Ian Watts is? He is amazing. I mean, it wasn't as clear in series three, but in or four. S- oh yeah, in series oh, particularly, yeah, particularly in series four as well. But in series five onwards, especially especially in the grand final, in the grand final of series five, he and 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 semi finals throughout, he is just amazing at what he does. And I, I a lot of people kind of, you know, their focus tends to shift onto the kids, uh, which is kind of a shame because I kind of think everyone, a lot of people forget about Ian, therefore. Like he's the one in the internet, he's driving it. Joe Watts is just the guy who pushed the button for the weapon. And, yep. oh, in fairness, the kids were decent in the minor meltdown as well. So, yeah, very, you know, they're very good. They're very good as well. And you can tell, you tell he's done some practicing in between. But obviously, in this series, you know, the clip <sighs> was nowhere near as potent as it was in future series. Obviously, you know, it's 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 new technology for them. They haven't done a flipper yet. It's true, and it definitely shows um, it's their first one. But the the leap from series four to series five is, is enormous. I mean, they go from second round in the heat to grand finalist, who to actually beat hit they beat Hypnotist, didn't they? Because they went to their and chaos. They beat Hypnotist and Chaos two in a row. <laughs> yeah, so that shows you the leap. And obviously, series six did well as well, and then series seven. That lucky flip from Iron Ore. <laughs> that was yeah. um, that's got that's the biggest. That's, I think it's up there with Tornado and uh, Deator. I that's probably the bigger a bigger upset, but it's bigger. Hey, but, you know but yeah, I, I I do love the bigger brother team. And again, um, who who was it again? Who was really disappointed that Orte broke down so quickly in Series oh, Eight? It was, it, was, it was a friend of mine uh, called uh, Steve. He, he said that Orte was going to win the series. And ah. didn't. it must be it must have been very hard for you not to you know the entire time not having to say not not being able to say to him. I won't get your hopes just, up. Yeah. Can I just say this about Orte? They actually lasted... They actually were... The only robot that lasted longer than them was Overdozer. Yeah. Wow. They <laughs> were taken out quicker than Overdozer. In fairness, in fairness though, Overdozer... They, they didn't regain the action a while, and Orte ran straight into Supernova, so... It, yeah. Kind of it, inevitable. It, it, it was. It, it kind of had it coming. In fairness. <laughs> um. But yeah, I love Bigger Brother. I love Ian Watts. Love that you know the kids are great as well. I mean, people make you know kind of get annoyed by them, but they, they, they don't really annoy me. They're fine. Um, I always lo- I always liked uh, Joe and Ellie Watts. They were yeah, the best they're, they're, part they're, of the team for me. Good fun. Let's just they're say, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not impressed with Bigger Brother in Series Four. Yeah, as you say, it's the first one. It's the first one to try to flip give it, her. Give, give it. it time. Give, just give it one series, and you'll have enough. To pretty yep. much have a great. Also, they great took robot. out the Mauler in uh, BattleBots in an impressive fashion. Oh yeah, they yeah. did, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Even, and the thing is, is that they didn't even use their flipper. It's just Bigger Brother's armor, and I think this was the Series Four version. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it was, but just one of uh, the Mauler's maces broke off from uh, Bigger Brother, and it just threw the whole thing off balance. <laughs> Also, because of the coloration of it, I swear the Series 4 version from a distance looks like, looks like it's made out of wood. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. Yeah, it looks like, like a wooden shell. The Series 5 onwards is more blacker than Not it is. Not so much for me. Fair enough. But anyway, uh, Hammer and Tong, what's that? What What is Hammer and Tong? I mean, here's, here's the thing about Hammer and Tong. It's, on principle, I like the idea they're going forward with the weapon. I think it's a very good, a, a, a unique idea. You know, having the axe that is retractable that also can be a flipper. I think that's actually kind of a, I mean, it's not, you know, not the greatest idea in the world, but it's, they're, they're thinking out of the box. I like this. But then you put it on a robot that can barely shift four miles an hour, and has, has, does it have, like, a bl- leaf blower motors just sticking in the middle of it, just outright? And they can be, not, it's two idea. wheelchair motors. I swear I can see a leaf blower thing, or some kind of fan or something just sticking inside the motor as well. And it's just, it just does nothing. Like I mean, did, honestly, in, in its entire appearance in the heat, did it actually 
contribute anything to the battles. I, I don't think they did. Though I will say it's a better combination of two weapons together than Maximus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just two weapons that don't go together. The idea was there, but the execution just... No. Ex exactly. I mean, I appreciate them for trying something different, but put on a, ba on a really, really bad robot, it doesn't really... It's sort of like the thing in... Um, I remember Simon mentioned when he was in the episode uh, in Series 3, how robots with chain lifts are the same thing. Because robots didn't really manage to improve on them or try them different, they just assumed they are all rubbish. But... Well, this could—I mean, it could—it could, it could, it could have gone differently if it, if it had been more successful the first time. Exactly, it's a bit like if Chaos Two was a rubbish flipper. No one would have gone for the CO Two as much as like you're copying uh, that kind of idea, and and you know going with it. Same with Razor's Crusher, and you know people wanted to have to go have to go and try it themselves. And while this is an interesting idea, it just gets put on a really mediocre robot, say the least, um, which is a shame. Um, and then, of course, we have the eventual, only one eventual annihilate, um, sort of annihilator uh, winners, the Northern Annihilator, Spikosaurus, the only Northern robot in the Northern Annihilator, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's I mean, true. I mean, well, I tell you, from, I'll tell you what. I mean, the North, the North doesn't have that many great robots compared to the South in numbers. Well, there are some good ones, of course. There are TR2 and Big Nipper, etc., and stuff. But Firestorm uh, is technically from the North. It is, yes. Yeah, Firestorm, Durham. Firestorm Durham, as well. Durham, Durham. But compared to the but South, know, but... Spikosaurus is wonderful. It was... It's just a, it's just a, like, it's, it's an, it was unlucky to be drawn in such a difficult opening melee. Honestly, I think this and Rambot share a lot of similarity. They were both very fast, both very hard to control, and both put against two good robots as well. Which meant they were kind of outclassed by the fact they weren't... They, were, they were, had no control. Which I think at the end of the day was the thing that let Spikosaurus down, was the fact it was too fast for its own good. Yeah. But, I do like the design of Spikosaurus more than Rambot, since Rambot is you well, know, yeah. just a wedge. <laughs> oh yeah, I prefer Spikosaurus a lot more, but it's kind of a shame that the first one we see him is in the really crappy pinball run, and you don't really get to... Uh, yeah, 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 and you, it yeah. starts sliding all over Kilolots. Yeah, but they did well, I mean, they got... I love the f amount of times, I mean, that's like a drinking game. How many times Spikosaurus got lifted, you know, did a barrel roll? It's just every I love, time. I love rollover designs. They're so fun. It was like the Morgue in, um, in Heat C as well. We got flipped onto Batilda. I just loved. I love those kind of. I just love those kind of things. And Ming, Ming Two's one was great. Which is it just like rolled a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But I mean, you could tell even by the end of their battle, the roll bar was starting to bend slightly. So even then, it, it was, if it wasn't actually in the last ten seconds, if it wasn't for um, Stinger hitting them, they were just stuck on their side. So, but I mean, I do. I do like Spikosaurus again. They had potential. It's just I think personally if they come back with a with a very similar design, and maybe at least reduce the speed a bit and maybe had a bit more driving experience, I think it could have been a very good robot. But or at least you know could have at least had a, had a decent shot. But I feel like as it was, it was just outclassed by two robots. So uh, it's weird to say that Stinger was well controlled in comparison, but at least Stinger's meant to be a flat bot, so you can have forgive it a bit. But with this robot, it was just too fast for its own good. But I, I like I, I do like it though. I do like it for what it's worth. I mean. It's more, it's more interesting than Rambot, but I like them both. And then, finally, the robot I think I... I have a... For a series 4, this is one of the robots I have a massive soft spot for, and I still, to this day, don't know why I love it so much, but uh, it's of course, it's uh, Claude Hopper, the first... Claude, Claude Hopper. Oh, Claude Hopper is in techno games, of course, the massive shoe with the cobble of the rabbit, <laughs> which I love as well, but... Yeah, the first walker, to uh, chronologically, to uh, compete in the main series. Obviously, we have Millennium Bug, Millennium Bug in a few heats' time, but they... Actually, they also do better in series. Also, they are the first walker to ever win a co battle in the main competition. Not in this series, of course, but in series five. Bloody Twister! Every time I think every heat, I saw someone I mentioned Twister. I, I don't know why, but because it's awful. It's appropriate, at least in this case. But I, I actually, actually, got to admit, um, in series three, you saw a lot of the war, and also Jim Struts in series two. A lot of the walkers weren't very stable. I mean, even something like Miss Struts, which was okay, it didn't really have any control. It was just fidgeted most of the time. It ended up going the right way eventually, a bit like Jim Struts did as well. And the, the closest the closest walker to being stable, I think, was probably an, an arachnid, which was just kind of just a CAD mode. So it wasn't really it wasn't it wasn't too complicated. It was just loads of gears moving in a straight line. But yeah, this one I got to admit, it's a very unique way of doing a walker, having the little kind of having the kind of the moving bars. And I, I, I th it made it really stable. Like this robot, and also they solved the problem of maneuverability because the biggest problem with the walkers, of for the most part, is that is they can't turn very easily. This one, yep. I mean, obviously didn't uh, didn't eleven have like a turning circle the size of a small bedroom or something like that 
It was small swimming pool. Swimming is pool. What Jay Pierce said. Yeah, it was mental. To, <laughs> yeah, but this thing actually can turn on the Spox as a as a, little, a wheel, an axle as that a turns fly, around. Fly, fly wheel on it, doesn't it? Yeah, and actually, also I will say the first robot to ever do that was a Leviathan. Actually, in series two, surprisingly, they had a wheel in the they had a fifth wheel in the middle as well. But this one did did it, and they thought about it. I like the fact they actually got a walker and they actually thought to themselves, okay, we're probably not going to get very far in the competition because we're not very offensive and we're not very. <laughs> You know, fast and all that, but we thought we're going to make a robot that's going to make it sturdy, we're going to make it reliable, and we're actually going to make it think about how we can turn as well. And then you get Millennium Bug later, which just does its thing. And it kind of proves why I like Claw and Harper slightly more. But, and in Series 5, it gets like a steroid boost. It just gets massive. I mean, it's, it's 200 kilograms compared to the 100 and th- almost 140 is in this series. And it gets the weird little spinners at the side, and I don't, I, I mean, in, I don't know, I'm just I'm just rambling at this point, but yeah, I I, I like I like Claude Hopper. He <laughs> any thoughts? Or... <laughs> it's 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 Claude Hopper. Fair enough, Nate. <laughs> I like Anarchy more. Oh yeah, Anarchy's Anarchy's Anarchy is better. <laughs> I like, I do like Anarchy more, but I do have a soft spot for Claude Hopper. Just kind of silly it looks, and also I just, yeah. I'm sorry, but it it's just the only other real thing I have to say about Claude Hopper. It's just. I just love that in Techno Games it was just this giant shoe. Claude Hopper is the best robot in Techno Games ever. <laughs> I love, I love Claude Hopper. It just, I felt sorry for the little rabbit mascot by the end of it. It was just getting, it was getting like a concussion. The amount of like, the amount of wobbling that was happening inside it, but I don't know. Anyway, that was that will be Heat J. I don't like, and I say I know my uh, alphabet once again. Uh, th- that was this was Heat I was just in. And uh, jo- joining me for Heat J will be Alex and uh, Mike, aka known as Mr. Psycho. So uh, that'll be cool. It's the first time he's his first time on the podcast as well. Would be nice to see because this is the first, the first time we've had Nate and Sam here. So it's, it's, it's good talking to you, Sam. It's been a pleasure, Nate. I'm sure we'll uh, discuss some uh, some more stuff in the future. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, the, the only other Heat I'm in for this series is uh, Heat O. That's uh, Panic Attack Heat. Um, I, I haven't really found many extreme episodes I want to be in. Hmm. Um, series 5 onward, though, I'm in a lot more heats because those were the series that I got to see when they aired here in America on yeah. uh, Tech TV. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Tech we'll TV. Get the, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get to those eventually. Of course. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure having both of you on here, and uh, thank you for helping out once again. Uh, I'm Jim Dramatic, signing off. I've been someone at 64, I suppose. And this is Otaku Nate signing off and saying, take your prayers, say your vitamins, eat your school, drink your teeth, stay in milk, and get eight hours of drugs. Awesome. <laughs> and, with, and with that, we are over. <laughs> Bye, folks. <laughs>